graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. Faggot and mean game. What else can you call somebody faggot? Because they're being a faggot, you know? Someone's just being a faggot. Mean. Shut up, faggot. I'm not supposed to use those for that. Shut up, faggot. Didn't mean, like, I would never call a gay guy a faggot, but he's being a faggot. But not because he's gay, you understand? Like, if I saw two guys blowing each other, and I don't know why I'm watching them do it, but if I just have them, you know. But if one of them took the dick out of his mouth and started acting all faggy and saying annoying faggy things, you know, people from Phoenix are Phoenicians or something like that. be like, hey, shut up, faggot. <laughs> faggot! Quit being a faggot and suck that dick. <laughs> That's what I would say to him. It's just a coincidence that you were talking about the Jack and Triumph show and I'm here. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, guy makes all those unlistenable podcasts over at Smodcast.com and you're listening to the two Strangers One Podcast. This is podcasting. You're listening to Two Strangers One Podcast. Subscribe to us on iTunes or on the Stitcher app for Android devices. Please visit Two Strangers One Podcast.net. Now, here's Chris Colon and Paul Pasquillo. Well, hello and welcome to Two Strangers One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. And let this be your trigger warning right now. I have a lot of trigger? notes. Ba- I have a lot of notes for this show, and I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go there. And the beautiful thing about being a hypocrite is that you're always right. So let this be your trigger warning before you start writing that email to me. Um, all right, Paul. So where should we begin? I think two seconds ago we agreed mm-hmm. that we're gonna talk about. I don't even have his name in my notes. That's I just have Rochester uh, weatherman. Jeremy something. Hold Capel? on. Hold on. Capel. Yes, I think so. Jeremy Capel, Capel. Uh, And it's funny because we are recording this on Dr. Martin Luther King's Day. Uh, We were supposed to record on Friday, but of course, life happens as usual. Um, By the way, by the way, something happened recently with a different uh, meteorologist that works doesn't work in your favor, sir. So, well, I well, I'll have I have that in my notes, and I have my okay then to that, sir. (laughs) (laughs) This is why I don't like I I don't like discussing the notes before the show, so we can just get into it. well, okay, so uh, Jeremy Capel, Capel, I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, about two weeks ago uh, was talking about uh, here in, in Rochester, there's a, you know, a, a, I don't want to say a big park, but it's a park where, you know, events happen and, and they have ice skating there and they'll have in the summer they have like a party in the park and, and everything like that. And it's called Martin Luther King Park. I think it's the same park that they have the ice skating in, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the same one they have ice skating, and if I'm not, it's 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 in the same plaza where like uh, the radio station is. Um, shit, ninety four point one. You know the the rock station. Isn't right? isn't strong right there? Um, strong Museum of Play there yeah, too. Yeah, it's a Museum of Play. So it, it's it, it's funny because it it in other cities it would be a more centralized park, and it is kind of a centralized park, but it doesn't get the love that it's it it should get i mean it is an essential yeah, and it's, area and it's very like that area is really small kind of technically yeah and and like there like you mentioned there is the rochester museum of play which is funny because they have like the toy hall of fame in there but the toy hall of fame is like like a section of the floor it's not even, you think a toy hall of fame i think it would be like a whole building like you know rock and roll hall of the fame or baseball hall of fame and it's like it's just a corner that they have <laughs> all right <laughs> So, well, if they have their way, there probably will be like a whole building of it. But continue. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's there's projected plans for that. And I and I my daughter always loves when we go there. Uh, that being said, um, a local local weatherman, uh, he was referring to the park, and he had and I'll admit I'll say this in a harpy, he slipped and said Martin Luther Coon Park. Now, uh, obviously, a lot of people got upset about that. Um, you know, the, the, the Rochester mayor, uh, you know, and, you know, and, and I'll know you're going to say this also. She stirred up the shit because she kind of spoke immediately after it happened. Kind of, uh, and once again, stirring mm. up the shit 
uh, kind of real quick, very reactionary, and the guy was let go automatically. Like the next within morning. hours, within yeah. hours of her saying that, and and like you know, I think like even like in the the morning news program, they had like someone from like the head, <laughs> from like you know management, uh, talking about it, and he was talking very much in legalese, and and oh, we've decided to let him go. Um, now you and I are at, at opposed to this uh, by saying. I, you know, and, and I know this is going to sound weird because later on we're going to get into other free speech matters, <laughs> but I do think that he should have lost his job. Mm. And the reason I say that is for someone to <laughs> say Martin Luther Kuhn, that's a thing that if they say that, that is something they have said a bunch of times in the past that I wouldn't slip up and say that because and I watch, I'll say it before the show's ever over. <laughs> But I'm saying, I, I mean, I'm only saying it because it's on my mind because I'm talking about, you know, the news report. Uh, and when I had posted originally uh, about that, you know, I had posted like three different YouTube links from people like in the in the 60s. And I think, well, I think there was one that happened about 10 years ago, either in Rochester or something like that. It was something local to us where the guy, instead of saying Martin Luther King, said Martin Luther Kuhn. Uh, then there was... Uh, there was then they had then I posted like two other clips from like the sixties where that was a popular term who people who fucking hated him uh called him. And my thing is that if you're gonna let that slip out of your mouth, that means you said it a bunch of fucking times. You know, saying you're a fucking weatherman, you're not reporting the news, you're not you know, he's not uh it's not like he was you know, he's writing a book on race relations and he's he's watching I think that's a word that he has said in private around people that he's comfortable with so many times that when he let it slip out, when I say, and once again, I don't, in no way, shape, or form, I think he was trying to be offensive. I don't think he was trying to be hurtful because, you know, why shoot yourself in the foot if you have a good job? You know, a weatherman is one of the, you know, a weatherman is one of those jobs where you can be wrong and somehow still keep your fucking job. And, you know, and especially in Rochester, you know, it's the easiest job in the world. You know, it's snow, it's snow, it's snow. It's always fucking cold. Um, now, uh, before you get to your part, uh, this water is so good. <laughs> <laughs> before I, before you get to your part, I do want to say that you know I do understand the argument that would say uh, he should keep his job. It was just a mistake. It was a dumb mistake. Uh, that being said, uh, the people who came out to support this guy because it was all over Twitter. You know, I, I follow a couple people, from, you know, Rochester uh, Twitter people, and the funny thing is, the people that I actually follow are very uh, conservative. Uh, you know, and it's just because they're in the news and then you see all right. these people and the, like, the funny thing is <clears throat> it's all Trump supporters. It's all, you know, it, it's all people, mm. you know, who like, uh, you know, why are they, mm. you know, the, the mayor stirring the shit and she made him lose his job and all this other stuff. And it's sort of like, I, I don't want to stand with those people. If I'm, if I have, if I believe in something and I, oh, he should keep his job and there's a guy in a fucking make America great, great America Make America Great Again hat standing next to me. I don't want him and I having the same fucking opinion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, when I saw how many... so now I see. Okay. Yeah. When All I saw right. how many people this. came out and said, "Oh, he should keep his job," going. and that's the whole okay. thing is that, it, and and this is going to sound once again, this is kind. Of, I may be overreaching my argument here, but it's uh, if. It, it, you, wait, wait, wait. You overreach? No, <laughs> no, no, not Chris Cologne. No. But this may be a thing where. This is, in my opinion, this is so, this would be no different than if he was having, like, you know, we've discussed this in the past, you know, like, like when Hulk Hogan had those conversations recorded about him. And the funny thing is, and, this, and even in those cases, I've taken Hulk Hogan's side, but if someone was re recording him without him knowing, and he said Martin Luther Kuhn, I think him saying that, let's just, I'm just saying hypothetically, that's not what happened. I'm saying in a hypothetical situation, that's no different than him letting that slip out when he said it, if you, if you catch my drift, it's it's sort of like he, right, he right, let right. his racism slip out a little bit. And, you know, that's, that's where I stand. So I, I acquiesce the floor to you, sir. <laughs> let me, uh, pull out my weapon here. No. Um, so, well, so now, now I get where it is. You just want him, you just want him fired because of the Trump supporters. I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I just don't want to um, sit on the same platform as the people going on. I'm sorry. So, so, where we do agree on this is I do believe, and it happens in any situation that involves uh, racism whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You know, you get these people 
that come out that are Trump supporters and they're like, and, and it's not, and it's not, they're not even, it, it's, they get to the point, and you'll agree with me on this, they get to the point where it's not even about the weatherman anymore. It's about something completely different involving racism. Mm-hmm. And you're just sitting there going, all right, dude, <laughs> like, <laughs> calm down. This isn't about your little, your little politics. This is about a man and his family and him not having a job anymore. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> First of all, you're forgetting to mention that Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter came out and supported this guy. Yeah, that's in my notes. I was going to bring that up. Go on, I'm sorry. And, and she says exactly the same thing I've been saying on social media since this happened. He should have been reprimanded. Mm-hmm. He should have been allowed to apologize, reprimanded in some way, uh, given either demoted or given a some some kind of sensitivity training, and then evaluate him after that. And yeah. see where he's at. And then, based on that, either he gets his job back or he's either de- stays demoted or gets fired. Mm-hmm. Okay? That makes sense to me. Um, the other thing that's key here is you're, you're talking about a very religious man who, and by the way, I've done, the, I've done my research. Mm-hmm. He's been at other stations. He's been, I think, in, I think he was in Kentucky mm-hmm. before, if I remember correctly. Yes, I think it was Kentucky. Um, you'd have to look it up. But that's the thing. That's that's the one thing I think we all miss about these kinds of situations is look at the man and his experience. Don't look at based on one word that came out during a telecast. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows? This guy could be could have been working 24 hours straight because we already know that News 10 is a shitty get news station anyways because they can go <laughs> fuck themselves. Um <laughs> No, I mean, no, I, I don't. What do you got against News Ten? <laughs> I, I don't watch them, dude. Like, or, I or just the fact they let the guy so get, let the guy go so quick is that is that your argument against them? Well, or? that well, here there's two argument. There's two reasons why I don't like what they did. Number one, they didn't even catch it until somebody said something on Sunday. Mm-hmm. That was number one. Number two, within hours of the mayor and the city council saying something, he was fired. Mm-hmm. So, let me get this straight. You and you investigated this, but didn't even do anything until Sunday, two days, two and a half days after this happened, basically, actually kind of three almost. Um, and then you're gonna fire this guy based on don't don't tell me don't give me the bullshit about well you know you know we didn't take the mayor saying yeah okay fuck you yes you did <laughs> yes you fucking did and she should fucking be fired too. Honestly, because literally two days later, she flips and says, she says, well, you know, he he should, you know, he should be getting he should get some kind of training or whatever. And it's just like, what happened to you wanted him fired? Mm -hmm. What happened to you wanted him fired? Like, that's why every time now that something happens in the news, they're Mm -hmm. like, they're like, oh, should we talk to the mayor? Because if the mayor says something, maybe maybe it'll actually get done. That's what I see, like on the mall opening yesterday. All the malls. Yeah, and like, just for, yeah. for the for the for the readers or for the listeners, uh, we're 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 recording this after like Rochester literally got hit with like fifteen minutes, fifteen inches of snow this past weekend. It was, it was about twenty inches of snow, but yeah. yeah, I mean, but you understand what I'm saying? Like, we shouldn't be reacting to somebody saying to somebody in power saying this person should be fired. We should be doing an extensive investigation, seeing what this guy's past is, and then coming out and saying, listen. This is the this is what we have, and being all public about it too as well. When something racist comes into the equation, you should be public about how you're investigating and how you're doing that. That's something else I believe in. I believe that they should show the whole process and say, "Listen, this is what we're doing." Okay. Mm-hmm. And by the way, I think the what was it the the NAACP here in Rochester? No, I don't think it was the NAACP. It was something else, but it was a black organization. Fuck mm-hmm. them. Fuck them. They were. They came out and they're like, "No, no, no. He deserved to be fired." Did you check his past? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you know. No, you didn't check his past. Fuck you. Check his past and then say that you didn't check his past. It's this is a totally different situation than those two dumb, dumb drunks that fucking went down Alexander Street, cut the, cut the um, what was what was the statue um. Uh, the... uh, Frederick Douglass, right? Mm-hmm. Frederick, Frederick uh, I can't even pronounce yeah. it right. Because in, in Rochester, there are a bunch of monuments of Frederick Douglass because Rochester yeah. was like the last stop on the Underground Railroad. We're gone. Yeah, and, and like you, you guys were quick to let that go. Now all of a sudden, 
this is the big thing. Like, shut the fuck up, okay? I'm sick and tired of... I'm going to say it. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say it. I'm tired of the racism coming from both directions. I'm tired of the racism coming from from white people, and that's mostly Trump supporters. I hate to say it, but... And by the way, when I mean Trump supporters, I'm talking about the ones that claim that they're they're white nationalists. Oh, we're... What, what, what's, what's the thing they've been talking about? Um... God, I can't think of it. Um, not it's not white power. It's like nationalism, or uh, do you know what I'm talking about, Chris? Uh, 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 a white nationalist? Is that? No, no, no. Well, I mean, no. They're talking of oh, naturalism or something. Like I, I don't know. I, it, it's I'm something along those lines. Mm-hmm. So, so like one of the things that the instead of them saying white power or white nationalism, it's um some kind of like nat nation i don't know nationalism or something mm-hmm. they're using a different term basically to justify why they're doing things mm-hmm. but i also think on the flip side of things and this is something i've believed for a long time is i think that and don't get me wrong some of it is warranted because of what's happened in the past mm-hmm. but i also think that some of these black organizations jump to conclusions without even making a step forward look at we have three black people that have come out in defense of this guy. You got uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s um, daughter, Bernice King, coming mm-hmm. out. You got uh, Don Lemon, who actually interviewed him. You can watch that interview on CNN, by the way. It was really good. Mm-hmm. And you got um, Al Roker, the famous yeah, Al Roker man. tweeted, you know, but let's be yeah. real here. Al, 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 Roker. <laughs> Al Roker's a fucking uncle <laughs> Well, He's an uncle I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just had to say that. I just had to be an asshole say that. But um, and and you know what? But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, like, I, do you and, understand? And what I understand saying? what you're saying. And you know what? It is on a day, and especially that we're on Martin Luther King Day, the day we're recording this. You know, maybe they should have they should have spanked him. They should have given him a nice public spanking. You know, let him do. You know, as they say, mea culpa. You know, make him, make him. You know, make him do community service. Make him do. You know, uh, yeah. you know, kind of just sort of like, look, dude, you want your fucking job back? Well, you're going to have to fucking do, you know, you know, not that like it's not well, like so, it's a court or anything like that. But, you know, like, you know, the because the, the, the Channel 10 here, that's NBC, you know, say, look, you know, you got to save face for the fucking company. So, you know, you're going to do you're going to work in this fucking soup kitchen and you're going to you know, they're going to be, you know, they're we're going to ha- host a thing in the fucking park, uh, <laughs> you know, that, you know, that, that you're in that same park that you misquoted and have you, you know, do, you know give give stuff to the homeless because that if the, i mean let's be real here that area where uh martin luther king park is it is it's not the greatest area in rochester you know? no you're gonna give blankets but, to the homeless you're gonna you're gonna fucking give blood you're gonna work in soup kitchens you're gonna you're gonna do fucking community service and then like you know and then maybe even like say like you know with like with it being like on martin luther king day so look you know in the spirit of forgiveness or whatever you know He's going to well, have his what, job that's back. That's what really surprises me about the black organization here in, in Rochester is they're like, it seems like they're not even willing to sit down with this guy. They're just like scolding him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm like, that's very out of character for, that's out of the character for any black organization I've, I've, yeah. you know, heard in the past. They're usually more like, listen, we want to, we want to have better understanding of what's going on here. Let's sit down. Let's come to, you know, let's come to an agreement. Let's talk. Because it's better to talk than to sit there and be doing that. And I, that's one of the things I really believe in is, is like, we should be talking about these things. Mm-hmm. You know, we should be open about these things. Like, for example, on uh, Facebook Watch, there's a, uh, Jada Pinkett, Pinkett Smith has a show, um, I think it's called Red Table. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that the recent episode she just did was with, um, that girl from, uh, Grey's Anatomy. She's married to a black man and they were talking about the whole issue. So I was watching this this morning and I, I found it so interesting because she's sitting there as a white woman, um, you know, basically supporting black people, but black people are giving her backlash because she's using a black fist and not, you know, as an emoji, mm-hmm. which is completely stupid. Why you would, why you would hate on her for doing that over the fact that she's supporting you know she's supporting a movement mm-hmm. and if she's supporting a movement it shouldn't worry it shouldn't matter what kind of color you have on your skin it's the same thing that the, chris me and you were we we were brought up as 
colorblind. And what I mean by that is, is we see things in one single color. Everybody, to me, has the same skin color. Does everybody have trash in their race? Yes. Mm. White people have trash in their race too. Don't fucking tell me that we don't. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the Trump supporters either. We got some people that have seven kids that basically live off welfare. Okay. I don't want to ever hear a black person say to me that, um, well, that's the kind of stereotype you're using. Well, yeah, yeah well, welfare, welfare is like has its biggest numbers in right. the Midwest, you know. And, and, there, and there's there's per there's capita. white people that are actually doing this. I've seen it with my own eyes. They literally will they will um, use the system just so they don't have to work. People, it's not it's not a color thing. Everybody is doing this the same thing, and I get sick and tired when I hear the stereotypes. My thing is is I think that racism needs to come into an open forum now. Where we talk about it, we don't we don't hide it, we don't we don't try to hurt each other. We come out and we say, "Listen, what's the issues here, and how to resolve them?" I think one of the things that's happening here, and I think it's both, and, and you know, yes, we have other races out here, but I think it's predominantly between white and black. Is we're not teaching people are not teaching their kids to see people colorblind. They're they're just they're either teaching them to hate the other race or to be cautious of the other race when that shouldn't be the situation. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you teach your child to be, um, and I think this is a good lesson for Martin Luther King day too, actually, you know, that's, that's why I'm kind of having this honest conversation. Yeah. You know, I, I might be white and some people may say, well, you have a privilege, you have a voice. Well, let me use that voice and say this. Not all black people are bad. Not all black people are going to hurt somebody. Not all black people are committing crimes. Okay? Mm-hmm. And and for anybody to stereotype black people that way is bullshit. Yeah. I, I, I fucking hate that shit. I, I, it absolutely pisses me off to my core. Mm-hmm. It's just, for me, getting back to what I'm trying to say is, is like, you know, I, I feel like we get, we've come into this environment where we're just going to be, you know, where black people are saying, be cautious of every white person you encounter. And there are white people that are being like, don't trust black people. You see what I'm saying, yeah. Chris? Like, it's it's both ways. And I know some people will hear this podcast and kind of be like, well, Paul, you know, they may hate on me for saying some of this stuff. But it's this is the honest truth, Chris, is it not? Like, Yeah. It's, this, you, know, you know, I mean, it's... I mean, it's a, it's a symptom of a larger problem. Once again, I don't think this guy's racist. I don't think, you know, this is something that slipped out. But once again, I think it's, you know, you know, I don't think this guy is burning any crosses. I don't think he wears a KKK outfit. No, no, it's no, no, something no. that slipped out of his mouth, but it, it comes from like this real normalized area where he said it so many times. He's had to have said it so many times in the past because a word like words like those don't come out of your mouth unless you said them before. You know, I mean, yes, there's such thing as Freudian slip or whatever, but, uh, you know, if, unless he said, you know, if he said, look, you know, I grew up and I had a racist uncle and he said it all the time. So that's why it's fresh in my mind or something like that. You know, that's one thing. But also, you know, there are people who, who do the news and especially if he comes from Kentucky or whatever the case may be. There are people who do the news where they have to lose their accents. They have to readjust right. the way they're thinking. And you know what? If, 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 you know, maybe you came from a fucking point of view where, you know, that's how your family was and you're trying to step above, but you really have to fucking rewire your brain and don't let shit like that slip out of your mouth. Now, now cause right. you had said, you had mentioned something about another reporter who said the exact same thing. Yeah. Just uh, maybe the back. last week or a couple days ago. Yeah. And, 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 and here's, here's my, here's my counter argument. <laughs> uh, that gentleman, uh, first and foremost, it was, it was in St. Louis. Uh, which, you know, uh, you know, I mean, of course there's like, I think Nelly, are they, <laughs> I know, that, I know, I know there's, there's ghettos in, in, in St. Louis because I know there's like rappers from <laughs> St. Louis, you know, I want to say right. like, like Nelly and those, those guys. Um, but, uh, and it was also a Fox station that was a, it was a St. Louis Fox station and, you know, and I hate to say it, but you know, I think Fox is a little bit more forgiving, you know, especially like in the Midwest, like a St. Louis where, you know. You can kind of get, and of course he apologized and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but and, can I can I interject here for a minute? Uh-huh. Here's the problem with that. He said it what at like five o'clock. Within hours, they had caught that he was back on the news 
apologizing for it right away, and he's being disciplined in the appropriate way that he's supposed to be disciplined right now. So, you know, I understand what you're trying to say here, but here's the problem. News 10 didn't count, didn't catch it. They didn't have him apologize, and they didn't do it appropriately. They did it right after city council and the mayor said something. You know, and for me, this mayor hasn't really done anything already. So this is just some one more thing to add to the list that pisses me off about her. It's, but it's you sort know? of, it's sort of, but it's one of those things where like, if there's a group of, of if there's a bunch of white guys hanging out together, and one of the white guys says something that's a little fucking racist, for the most part, no one's gonna fucking say anything. You know what I'm saying? Unless you have some fucking, you know, fucking social justice warrior, fucking, you know, nosy, you know, fucking asshole in the middle of the group. You know, he may step in and say something. And, yeah, you know, and maybe in the perfect world, yes, someone should step up and say something. But, you know, yeah, in St. Louis, where it's probably less of a an issue, <laughs> it didn't get addressed, just... addressed, you know, the way it gets addressed here in Rochester. And it also, also, you know, this guy, this guy got fired. Why isn't any other news station jumping up why isn't the fox station here in rochester going okay look we'll hire him you know we'll get all those wonderful you know i'm saying I the guy poisoned well, himself by saying some shit like that but, you but I, think, I, like, I think you know if the fox wanted to really show their wonderful support for all their their trump supporter you know uh fans and stuff like that and watch you're making it about trump supporters though that's the problem <laughs> I'm just saying, and, and here's here's what you're here's what you're you're not understanding about this whole situation too mm-hmm. is if you notice this this whole weatherman thing has died down mm. and it's continuing to die down within a couple months dude he's probably going to have a job. I don't think he'll have I don't know if he'll have a job here in Rochester mm. but I have a feeling that he will have a job again. Yeah. And we'll honestly go, we'll go like, somewhere and hopefully be have a job where people don't I mean some of the Google some of the the newscasters <laughs> yeah some of the meteorologists just here in Rochester were were still I mean they they asked um Scott um Hedgeco, I think that's how I say yeah. that's how you say his last name. Um, people love this meteorologist. He didn't really say too much about it, but he said he's like, he's like, he basically was saying like, without saying it, he basically was saying like, this is bullshit. What happened to him? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I, I, you know, you have to understand like this is. This shouldn't. And by the way, I hope he sues the shit out of them. By the way, fuck them. Um, and they de- he deserves every dime that he gets from those fucking bastards. Um, I think but, I think when you get when you get a job like that, you sign your fucking life away. It's sort of well, like, it depends know. on the contract, dude. Like it depends. Now we could be having this conversation, and it is part of his clause. If they fire him, he gets still gets his 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 salary. Yeah. I mean, that could be what it is. That could be I another reason why another station hasn't hired him. They probably have, you know, they're going to, you know, probably pay off the rest of his contract, you know, and then, you know, I mean, I, they, oh, yeah. I, I, they I, never I, discussed I'm, the details to the best of my knowledge, but. No, you know, and, they, and, you know, I, I feel like, you know, this guy somehow is going to be, a, it, at some point he's going to have a job within the year. I, I can't see him not having a job. I'm sure, like. Will it be here in Rochester? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I would probably say it's not going to – it yeah. more than likely won't happen. But that's not just because of his comments. That's because there's – like, I don't know where they would put him. There's News no source way St. 13, <laughs> News, News Source 13, like, literally has, like, sh- like shits lo- shitloads of meteorologists. You know what I mean? And, um, I mean, the only place I could see him really going is, like, News 10 or – um. Not News Ten. News Eight. Say, News Ten is the one that just fired him. Uh, Channel Eight, maybe or um, yeah. number of people. Yeah, remember, 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 people live outside Rochester. They don't know <laughs> when you say News Eight. They don't know what the fuck you're talking about. News so, Eight would be CBS or uh, you know Fox. Fox here is the uh, the you know yeah. the, well the Fox is yeah you know, Fox is uh, what are they what is that Fox? There's 31. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I lost. I got. <laughs> but let's let's move on uh, unless yeah, you have anything else but, but basically what i'm saying guys is i think there's the lesson that's got to be learned here and i'll make this very quick is before we judge somebody let's look at their past and let's not just jump to firing somebody because i think that's just really stupid and remember this guy had has a wife and two kids to support if you know in any other situation there would be an hr situation and this would have been done more appropriately, and I think he wouldn't have gotten fired. And that's the perspective that I'm coming from: is being in being that I have a degree in business, a bachelor's in business to administration. Yeah, that's right. I'm gonna fucking throw that on the table. Um, <laughs> like I know the HR process. 
he didn't get an HR process. So yeah. honestly, if his contract's not going to get paid out and he's not getting any more money, you will see a lawsuit here soon. And he probably will win it, honestly. Yeah. Um, the, the court of public opinion, you know, he's, he's poison. Like I said, I mean, they, you know, why wouldn't have, I mean, they should, I, another station should snatch him up and say, look how wonderful we are. We hired him even though he was oh, yeah, wrongfully accused. Oh, yeah, dang, definitely. I, I feel like somebody's going to do that. <laughs> I kind of hope it's here in Rochester so that, you know, like the CBS station will look good in the process, but we'll see. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I have no idea, but. You know. All right. So from one from one racist thing to another racist thing, <laughs> let's talk about these Covington kids. Uh, these kids that came from a Catholic school. Uh, Are we talking about the, the Indian- kids that were in the face of the the Native American? Uh, Did you watch CNN today? I I don't well no I don't have a CNN in my house. <laughs> so, so before, but I I so, did see I did see a bunch of videos online. But go on. So basically, this was what I like to call the clusterfuck of clusterfucks all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, you had these Trump supporters. um, You had these Indians that were protesting. What what were they protesting? I don't remember. Do you remember? Do you know what it was they were protesting? Well, the Indians was protesting, you know, like shit like that's going on, like, you know, with the with the pipeline. Okay, you know, the the pipeline is, you know, went through their land and is spilling oil. They they, they stopped the pipeline. I hope you know that. But that's a whole different thing that we can talk about later. Um, uh, So the video surfaced, and and this was on CNN today. Um, It all started with these black people being really, like, super fucking racist. Calling white people, well, calling Trump supporters crackers, and well, shit. Yeah, I mean, let's. I mean, let me preface that by saying that these are the the black Israelites, the guys that the guys that we're talking about, the guys that were real. That was that you know the the, the first shots that were fired were from these black Israelites guys. But you, and, you and there I'm are saying, guys like that in downtown Rochester. But I grew up with these guys in New York City, where you know, in any fucking major thoroughfare, where like you know, where a lot of people shop, and they go. And, you know, and, and, you know, and I've sat there and I've listened to what they say, you know, they think there's, you know, there's 13 tribes of Israel and, you know, and they, you know, the Africans <laughs> are one of the tribes of Israel. And, oh, and, God. and now that being said, their, their tactics are very, uh, militant and are very yes. like, you know, the, you know, the long story short. And I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but I'm not, you know, not exaggerating, you know, white people should be eliminated off the face of the earth, you know. Right. These guys start shit. You know, uh, now the funny thing is that, you know, I don't think, I mean, don't, I'm pretty sure people have gotten into physical altercations, but in the years that I've dealt with these guys, you know, it's sort of like, you'll just, my thing is, you know, maybe coming from New York City, I'm sort of like, just let them say what the fuck they're going to say. You know what I'm saying? They're just going to stand there. And, you know, and depending on, depending on where you're coming from, you know, they do look ridiculous. They all wear like, you know, they all, they all, they all dress like, you know, they're, going to be walking in the middle of the desert you know they look they all look dressed like like the three wise men and shit like that you know they wear sandals I love you, Chris. <laughs> they look like the, the wise men walking through the desert yeah, that's it, it is part of that. their that's part that's of their wonderful. their thing and it's you know and i mean you know i don't think i'm speaking out of school when i say that you know and they do start a lot of shit they do refer to white people's crackers and the white devil and everything like that they are very very militant you know um but I'm, I'm sorry. So I mean, my so then these kids. Now let me just no. Let's rewind here for a second. These are kids who come from a Catholic school, going down to Washington D.C. during the Women's March. This past this past uh, Saturday in Washington D.C. was the Women's March. You know, there was you know the day after Trump took office. You know, two years ago. You know, it was like the biggest Women's March in history. You know, women came out. So these kids who came from a Catholic school. Wearing fucking Make America Great Again hats, and you know Donald Trump's people don't exactly fucking stand for women's, you know, for women's right to have abortions, women's right to fucking, you know, you know, if it was, you know, they have no problem with women making seventy percent, you know, seventy percent of what a man makes, you know, it's sort of like, well, fuck you, if you can't, you know, if you can't fend for yourself and fucking be bulldozed over, you know, uh, these kids, you know, I mean, so they came, they went down to Washington, and they. And of course, you know, these kids who came from very privileged, fucking isolated areas dealing with the, uh, the black Israelites, 
there was a there was confrontations and of course the kids you know can't fucking fathom the idea that there's someone who wants them dead can't fa- you know these are these are two extremists on on different sides of the spectrum kind of meeting uh, in Washington DC and once again you know the black israelites are well, always starting shit we we have to preface this by saying also there were adults behind these kids that were edging you know um egging these kids on that were the Trump, the real Trump supporters. Yeah, they should so, have. They should have navigated those kids away from. The I, and, I, and I think that's why that one kid came out. That the, the kid that was in the video. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's why he came out and said, "Listen, this isn't just so cut and dry to where you think it is." Like, and for I, I hate to say to this, I don't want to be like mean to this kid or anything, but like when you're stint, when you're sitting there smiling as a, as a Indian is playing you know, an instrument and you have a, a Trump hat on that doesn't look good on you, dude. So dude, maybe you shouldn't be like smiling in that, like being like well, a fucking little asshole. That's what comes with privilege. That's comes from right. being totally tone deaf to the situation and to be totally fucking, you know, oblivious to the fact that there's people out there who don't like you and, and rightfully so don't like you. Now, once and, again, and, I'm not I saying know. as militant as the black people saying eliminate all white people. You and, know, and black I don't, don't want to go, I don't want to go so far to blame these kids because like I said, those adults were back there. Even the Indians said this. They were like, we don't feel like the kids were, like they were completely doing this themselves. They, they, we literally saw these adults saying, you go and do this. Mm-hmm. Like, no. so it, it's, you know, I, I can't really blame, I, I, I get like, yes, these kids shouldn't be doing this, but I think the parents need to be fucking like, somebody needs to take these parents out back and smack them upside their fucking head. Yeah, I'm sick and tired been. of this shit. Like, yeah. seriously, like, why well, are you teaching your kids this shit? Because, because they're the those parents came from a fucking isolated world where they don't understand how people don't fucking love them, and and that being said, <laughs> I, and I've seen the videos because everyone the big argument a lot of people are saying is that the the Indian guy stepped to the white kids, and if you watch the video, yes, he approached the white kids, but that being said, if you see his mannerisms, he didn't go with them aggressively, he approached them, but he was, this is the one thing that I I don't understand why no one's seeing, uh, what you know of the videos. Yes, he approached them to be a barrier. He approached them to be in between the privileged fucking white kids and the black Israelites that were fucking spouting fucking hate. And once again, you know, you know, the, the, you know, I hate to say, you know, I'm not going to sound like Donald Trump saying good people on both sides. There are bad people, people on both sides. Yet he stepped to the kids probably because maybe he felt it would be easier to approach the kids. You know, and if all he and it's not like he sat there. He didn't curse. He didn't raise his voice. He sat there uh, chanting the chant that he chanted. You know, and and in a way to kind of sort of I I think what he was trying to do is deescalate the situation, you know, in his way, bring peace to the situation. And and these kids who are so fucking, you know, culturally fucking inept and think the whole fucking world revolves around them. You know, they don't understand that he stood he went there as a fucking peacekeeper. And this once again, I'm I'm maybe I'm interjecting. What I saw is I saw a guy stepping in between two hostile factions and doing his best and, and in a, in a, in a, almost, you know, fucking stereotypical Native American elder way to kind of say, you know what, let's have peace. Let's de escalate the situation, you know, chanting. I mean, you know, it would have been hard, you know, it looks like He's taking the black Israelite side because his back is to the black Israelites, but he had to take some side. He had to face one group of people. And mm-hmm. I, and obviously it would probably easier to, to approach the kids as opposed to guys who've been screaming into a microphone, you know, cracker and kill whitey and all this other shit. I mean, they, I don't think they said kill whitey, but they definitely said cracker. I've started that in a video. Um, you know, one thing that I, I'm, it's blowing my mind that no one's fucking addressing is that this guy stepped in in my opinion as a as a peacemaker as a, someone like a wall someone to de-escalate the situation and the kids then took that you know they took in, in their wonderful worldview and took that and started mocking his his chanting mocking his saying you know dancing to the music kind of and then the funny thing is when you watch the video like they start chanting with him for like a minute i mean they're mocking him but like they can't even keep the beat <laughs> and they can't even dance now that being said well, right I, before we I, recorded I this episode know. hold on a second right before we recorded this episode uh, I saw someone posted on Facebook the, uh, a Snopes article, and it was proved true that these kids wore blackface, or the school itself, kids from the school wore blackface at a basketball game. So it, once again, this is sort of like this, you know, there's a culture of, 
uh, of people that are so fucking tone deaf and so fucking, you know, blind to the outside world that, you know, in the, in this day and age, in this fucking day and age, for you to go out in public in blackface, it's fucking ridiculous. And it's totally, obviously, it's a culture where that's accepted. If, it, it, at a place where it's accepted to be wear blackface and accepted to wear fucking Make America Great Again hats, you know. And the whole thing is, you know what? I'll even concede the point where, you know what? It is your right as an American citizen. If you want to wear American, make America great again hat, you know what? That is your right. And I'll concede that point. But to go out in blackface, now you've, you've overstepped the social boundary. That's not cool. That's not funny. That's not that it, it, anyone and any kind of authority. And let's just say the kids are, stu- yeah, the kids are stupid. And they, but you know what? Any adult at that game, cause it's, it's pictures at a basketball game and uh, a basketball games and they see all these kids yelling at this one black player from the other team um a parent a, an adult a supervisor someone someone in authority should have if that kid showed up in black and these are kids not just one there were kids there were two people in the picture and then when you they showed video there's like three or four people in all black any person in authority should have stepped in and said no go home wash up or go home you know, and you know, and, and so I mean, not to cut you off when you, I know you were about to say something, but you know, let's understand that these kids come from a culture of being totally fucking tone deaf to the whole situation. You know, and then to oh, say yeah, they're I'm smirking and mocking a fucking a Native American guy is is it it infuriates me, and it just it blows my mind that that shit still exists. But I forget that you know we live we live on the coasts. You know, we you know the people who live on the coasts who live in integrated cities and areas where you know things we we you know. I could leave, you know, you leave my block and you come across, you know, five or six different languages and, you know, but there's people who they grew up and all they know is white people and white culture and, you know, and whatever, you know, middle America culture that, you know, that all the only time they see black people is on TV, the only, you know, or the, or the, you know, the, the one token family that lives in the neighborhood, you know, the people, you know, you know, to use like, you know, token from South Park. I mean, I hate to use it, but you know, there's the, you know, there's that one family that's trying to do better. So they move into the white neighborhood, but you know, it's not like this kid, the kid they meet it is exactly, you know, it doesn't represent the majority of black people in this country. There, there is a one white person in a fucking black neighborhood, you know? So, you know, for these kids to be so fucking tone deaf, you know, they should, you know, but that's, that's, that's my take on the situation. I don't know if there's anything else you want to. I, I just, I mean, I just wanted to say, like, I, I think that the whole situation, honestly, is kind of, and it, this just goes to show, like, why social media, the bad parts of social media, because the whole situation was originally about this white kid that has a Trump hat on versus this Indian and all that racism that comes back to this, you know, Native American again. Yeah, and 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 so what you say? Wait a minute, what? Native American Paul. <laughs> You're well, that's Indian. still racism. It's, it's still racism. No, Either way, I'm sorry, but I mean, kind of showing your hand when you say Indian instead of Native. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. Come on, you know, okay. Indian, Redskins. Go on. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to buzz your balls. <sighs> I'm gonna slap you. So I have this like foam like spraying thing. I'm just gonna spray you and then beat you with it. Um. <laughs> so getting back to what I was saying, like. Honestly, it's like this is the whole thing about like seeing the whole picture before you pass judgment, because I, I kind of think that it's just like what happened in this situation was literally all of the above. You know, it, it kind of reminds me of this situation. I think it happened like two or three years ago where this Trump supporter, it was a woman, mind you. She she was protesting at some kind of protest rally where it was like some kind of woman's march. No, it wasn't even – I don't even know if it was a woman's march, but the, she was the counter protest. Mm-hmm. Um, she All she was doing was doing her freedom of speech. She wasn't harassing people. She wasn't treating anybody like shit from at least my view. Mm-hmm. She turns around to walk away from the person that she was saying something to and some guy out of the blue just came and hit her in the face. No Trump hat, nothing, just punched her in the face. Mm. And I'm like, I looked at that and went, excuse me? Like, and, and literally, like, I had, I, I talked about this on Twitter earlier, or late, late last year, because this video had surfaced. And I, I, I was so amazed by, like, how many of these Republicans were like, listen, like, you know, you're right, like, 
it's it's nice to see that well, some of them are like you should become a Republican. I'm like no 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 not as long as Trump's gonna be. <laughs> fucking mm-hmm. if Trump's a Republican I'm not gonna, never gonna be a Republican. Um, I'm more of an independent more or less, and that that's kind of what the point of the politics side of this is. But mm-hmm. the one thing that we were talking about is how like it's one thing if you protest and you're doing it in an appropriate way and somebody just smacks you in the face. Whereas if you're, you know, just like those, the, the, what, what was the name of the group? Um, the Israelites or whatever. The black Israelites. Yeah. Yeah. Like them just coming in and being like, F you, F that kill all the white people. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and then just starting a bunch of shit because that's literally what happened here. They started a bunch of shit. You're right. That's what happened. And it's just like, you sit there and you look at this situation and you go, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> this is this is exactly why, like, I, I'm literally scared at my job to even do something wrong. Because here's the thing. You could be, somebody could record you, and you're not, and, and you, you're not even doing anything. Mm-hmm. And then you're, you're labeled a racist or you're labeled a piece of shit. And then you have to carry that for the, for as long as that story's out there. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not saying that this kid is innocent because he's not. He's not completely innocent in this whole situation. And, you know, so I can't say that anybody's innocent in this situation. What I'm saying is, is social media caused an uproar over something before the whole thing was flushed out. And we could have seen and we needed to see the whole picture before we did this. This is the kind of thing that I keep talking about. I know I keep saying this. It's getting really fucking annoying. But it's true, Chris. We need to do research before we condemn somebody or a group or anything. Mm-hmm. Do your research. See what it's all about. See every single video that comes out and then make your decision. That's what I do, dude. Like I, 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 somebody, I have a conversation with somebody and I process that for 24 hours because I'm a very fucking intelligent person. Mm-hmm. The older that I've gotten, the more intelligent I've gotten. I mean, you can see I took something that was in my brain and made a huge website out of it, dude. Mm-hmm. You know that. Now I've partnered one. Well, we'll talk about that later. But I've partnered with a con. Like, do you see, like, what I'm doing? Do you understand, like, I've used my intelligence to create something. We should also use that intelligence to make informed decisions. And the only way that you can do that is do the, re- is do the research. Mm-hmm. So... I, I just think that we need to kind of calm down before we, you know, pass judgment on things. Mm-hmm. And that's that's just my point here. It's it, I'm, I'm sure we're going to be talking about this whole podcast because I'm sure there's more examples. I mean, yeah. look at, look at the, I, I don't know if you have this in your notes, but CNN also reported yesterday or the day before, there's these idiots in an Ohio plant that are fucking putting up new, uh, nooses. Mm-hmm. And did I say that right? Nooses, yeah. Um, and whites only on the wall. Yeah, like because because people are so people are so fucking emboldened by Trump and his bullshit exactly. that they you and, know and, they're reverting. They're saying you know it's like it's okay to be fucking a white supremacist again. And I'm literally looking on these comments, dude. And this is why I didn't comment on it. And that's the one thing. Like by the way, if you guys do follow me on social media and you see like a news story and you wonder why I don't. I don't say anything about it where I say other things about other posts. It's because I see so many of these Trump supporters and I'm like, it's not even worth my time mm-hmm. because all I'm going to, all it is is they're just going to do what I call the circle method. They're going to circle back and just keep saying, but this is, this point is what it is and it's my point. So I'm right. That's mm-hmm. what it is. It's just the circle method. And you know, it, the same thing happened there where like, it, and, and I do agree with some people where they're like, well, this doesn't seem cut and dry. Something else is going on here. Where they're, they're and they're saying that in regards to HR's HR had to have stepped in somehow in this situation. And I agree with that. I don't see GM sitting there allowing this shit to happen, especially now that it's on CNN. I don't see them being that stupid. I don't. I think what's happened is is that they're not doing things quick enough, mm-hmm. and therefore. That's why these gentlemen came out. And don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If their stories are true, which I do believe these two gentlemen, but again, we don't know. We never know. But these two black gentlemen do have a story. They have pictures. They have evidence. 
So honestly, and let me explain this from a business perspective because I've seen this several times. HR doesn't do doesn't do this, Chris. They don't snap their fingers and it's done. They don't. HR processes take months to go through. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if some if they found out who was doing these nooses and whites only, they're going to build a case against this person. And if this person isn't causing physical harm or anything, they may still have their job right now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because they want to gain evidence, and they may be watching this person too. For all we know, yeah. Well, people. It, it, I'm not saying it's one person. I think it. I, I happen to think it's one person, maybe a couple, whatever. But in that situation, they're going to build a case, and then when they get to a certain point, they're going to go, "Okay, this is why." Okay, you, you, we're going to pull you in the office. You've been doing this. You're done. Yeah, I mean, nooses, I'm not familiar with the story, but I mean, if you're talking about nooses, I mean, that's like hate crime level death threats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know, if this was another country or, you know, 500 years ago, a noose meant something totally different. But in this day and age, a noose means one thing, you know, right. and, 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 you know, it's not like you're not being cute. You're not being funny. A noose is, is something that's very fucking serious and has very serious connotations. And, and, and once again, that can easily, easily be, uh, uh, you know, accepted as a hate crime, you know, and, 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 and a and death threat just, for that, you know, a death threat and a hate crime. And I, and I think this podcast today needs to be kind of learning lessons. Mm-hmm. Okay. Me and you, Chris, are very, are very, um, we can probably consider ourselves not to be racist i can consider you being an asshole but that's that's a whole different story (laughs) sometimes i sit there and go the opinions of chris cologne do not support paul (laughs) biscrillo but other than that i mean i you know honestly dude like i can say that you're not the type of person to sit there and be like fuck that black person Mm -hmm. okay and i'm saying that in a nice way because that's my (laughs) ex-wife Except that's, my ex-wife, who yeah, happens to be that's black. That's a whole different... Dude, dude, we could have, I, hate, I hate her because of the concept of her character, not because of the color I, I, of her skin. I, I have a feeling that we could have like a whole fucking podcast <laughs> about that. And it's not even... Here's the fucked up part. It's not even about the black part of her. Yeah. No, it's I'm the, just, it's I was the whole just, thing. I'm, once again, that's just me totally being an asshole. And once again, but in, yes. on, in the spirit of Martin Luther King, I hate her because of the concept of her character, not because of the color of her skin. <laughs> the opinions of... <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah, so... You know, it's, I just feel like, I feel like what's going to happen here is we have to wait till the four years are up and we can get rid of this stupid asshole and get him completely out of the situation. Then we can go back to, then we can go back to, you know, we can go to, we can heal our nation finally. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, one of the things that people, I, I, I get, I don't think people realize is, a lot of people are not ready for a woman president yet, I don't think. I don't think – well, okay, I take that back. If Michelle Obama were to run right now, that would be the only woman that would be able to win the presidency in my view. A lot of people like her. Um, I think that she would make a good president if she decided to run. I can understand completely why she isn't running. She doesn't want to put her kids under that stress. Um, she's seen what Barack has gone through. I can get that. But, you know, I, I feel like I, I see all these women running on the Democratic side. And don't get me wrong. I want a woman president. I wanted Hillary Clinton to win. You know, people will say this, that, and the other about her. And I'm just like, you know, I, I love how you guys sit there and say that all that, you know, she's this, this, and this. But more than 90% of that was Russian shit. So what makes you think that she was doing all this, 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 and this? I get what you're saying, but you're judging her based you're, – you're basically trying to take an easy way out so you don't have to vote for a woman. That's what it happened. Yeah. And that's what empowered a lot of women, and that's why there's a lot of women in the House right now. You can thank Hillary Clinton for that. Nobody can fucking sit there and say – that Hillary Clinton didn't have an impact on this last election because she did. Women got pissed off and mm-hmm. they said, fuck this. We're going to fucking have our own control. And that's why 
your girl, the one that you want to fuck really badly, yeah. is, is in the House Ocasio of Representatives. Cortez. Oh my God, I love her. I mean, you know, and if okay, and in the, in this past week alone, uh, well, I mean, there's that old video of her from Boston University dancing, and you know, the joke I had put in is, you know, being a native New Yorker, I do not like Boston. You know, it's 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 my it's my birthright to hate Boston and all things from people from Boston and all. You know, uh, you know, I demand you remove that shirt slowly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you want her to remove that shirt for a different reason. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah, and then like you know, she had tweeted, uh, she quoted fucking Alan Moore from you know The Watchmen, uh, where um, when Rorschach goes into jail and he tells all the he tells the other prisoners he goes, uh, you know, I'm not locked in here with you, all of you are locked in here with me, you know. That's before he threw boiling oil on that guy, and uh, then even uh, the fun- I swear to God, as 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 we're saying this, it was a, a quote from uh, it was a tweet from new york magazine and then she t- she uh, it said new york magazine tweeted uh in a poll even 45 percent of self-identified republicans yes approved of the aoc's 70 percent top marginal tax rate and then uh then she had she had texted all your base are belong to us which you know i mean people who could pull that out of the fucking ether and people could pull fucking you know alan moore watchman out of the ether yeah you know, I, I love this chick, you know, and, and you know, I mean, I, I make jokes and yeah, she's sexy, but she's the fucking, she really is the fucking change that we need. I mean, is she, is she be making light of it? Yeah. But you know, I mean, you know, you have to laugh to keep from crying, but you know, she's fighting the good fight, you know, and, 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 and well, she so has my back. I, I like her because she does certain things like that, but I think that she kind of has to, she sometimes lets her Latino fire come out a little bit and i, I just I, I say to her I, i'm like i'm like whoa just slow your roll a little bit slow your fucking roll i get what you want to do I, I understand what you're trying to do and you're trying to do radical ideas but the one thing I, that absolutely i don't like in politics is this heavy socialism of well everybody can pay for everybody else's shit and i just sit there and i go slow your roll for a minute <laughs> i'm like <laughs> Do not think that you can – like she wants to change everything to green, green stuff. And and guess what? I'm on board with that. But if she thinks that tomorrow is going to be, oh, look, we're all – we all – like you snap your fingers and everybody has electric cars. That's not how it works. Yeah, but that's you got to get the ball – got to get the ball rolling somewhere. I mean – Well, Obama did get the ball rolling. That's why – but we have to make sure it keeps rolling with all the shit that fucking oh, right, Trump, right, right. Trump. No, 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 you know, no. I, I, I backtracking all the that. fucking Obama's things. You know, we got, you know, we need someone but, in the trenches, fucking keeping the, you know, it kind of just try, keep us from sliding backwards. You know, and but it, that's why. But if you look at GM, for example, not to bring them back up, but they're getting rid of like all their compact cars because nobody, because the price of gas is low, so people are buying the trucks. People are buying the. Um, the SUVs and everything like that. And that's the problem is they're not realizing that for me, like for me, Chris, I love the fact that my cruise, I don't have to fill it up for like a week and a half, almost two weeks. Mm -hmm. I love that shit. I love it. But here's the thing. People, and especially here in Rochester and Buffalo and Syracuse, especially after winters like this, you sit there and go, fuck that. I need to have an all wheel drive vehicle. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I get it. I, I I absolutely get why people are doing that, and the price is low. But I guarantee you, it's it's the same thing that happens every time. The price will go over three dollars again at some point, and guess what's going to happen, Chris? Everybody's going to want compact cars again because they get the the fuel efficiency, yeah, it's a and cycle, then GM yeah. and and then GM and Ford and everybody will start selling that shit again. I'm not stupid. Don't mm-hmm. don't make me out to be stupid. Oh, by the way, it makes it easier for me to go buy a brand new cruise, which I hope to do. Um, <laughs> But yeah, your girl, like, honestly, like, I, I sat there and so these, but the, the, I think the thing that, that I love the most about her mm-hmm. is the fact that these Republicans have this huge stiffy for her. It's mm-hmm. like, they are so like, <laughs> they could be talking about the weather and they would say it's because of her that the weather's bad. Yeah. And I I'm literally like a... sitting there. I'm literally sitting there going, what is, like, why are you people so scared of this woman? (laughs) Like, why are you so scared? Stop being scared of this woman. She's, listen, 
if we can't even if you guys can't even decide on how to take a dump in the capital, how are you how is she gonna get some of her agenda to go? Because she's she, not. I mean, because they see they see the fucking they see the end of the tunnel. They see the, the they see past the horizon. Because what she, one of the things from what I understand that she's doing now is that she is schooling some of the older Democratic people how to use Twitter. You know, there's a young base coming up, all the people that are affected, you know, and of course, you know, I, we could sit here and shit on millennials like I often do. But I'm just saying is there there are people now, millennials are of voting age now, and right. and and it would be smart to reach out to them on Twitter and to have people more actively, you know, shit, you know, they fucking, what, in Egypt, they fucking revolted against the government. <laughs> and it was, somebody, all, it was all because of Twitter. So when if, somebody effectively uses the same tactics that Obama used to become president, mm. they will win things. Now... Yeah. That Clinton, being when Clinton said, was in office, he had the youth vote. I'm fucking playing the saxophone on Arsenio Hall. Exactly. You know, he exactly. won the hearts and he won the hearts and minds of young people. And, and now but, she's helping people. The Democrats go, okay, let's start tweeting. Let's get those. You know, let's get these people who people who get their fucking news from Twitter. Let's point them in in the right direction, or at but, least. You know, but here's but here's the agenda. reverse. Here's yeah. the reverse. Like, I don't mind that for for Congress and the Senate. Mm-hmm. But as but for president, especially after these people, I want somebody like a Joe Biden in there. I want mm-hmm. somebody that I know that will do the job right. He won't take anybody's bullshit, but he'll do it in the right way. You know what I mean? Like Joe is like one of these people that's like, no, go fuck yourself. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I want him. I don't care if he's just there for four years. I just want this. I want the nation to come back to a stable environment. I, I you know, I, I understand there are some people out there. It's it's like what happened in this election, and I and I talked about this right after the election. Independents are the ones that you can thank for this election, because what they did was is they 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 sent two messages. They sent a message to the president: we don't like what you're saying, we don't like how you do things, so we're going to put the house in democratic control, and by doing that, we're going to pretty much, you know, make sure that these panels can investigate you because we don't like where this is going and we want to see what the reality is because the Republicans are being stupid. On the reverse of that, they also said, but we like some of your economic policies. Now, I don't know if they would say that now, but um, they, they, they went, we're going to let you still have the Senate. So do you, do you see what they did there? Mm-hmm. You see what people have been doing? The, and that's why I say, don't look at Republicans, don't look at Democrats. Look at the people that are in the middle and see mm-hmm. what they do. Because those are the real Americans. Those are the ones that are like, I like some of the ideas over here on the Republican side. I like, a, and most of them are Democrats. Let's, let's just be honest. They are Democrats. And they sit there, and the Democratic side of them are just like, okay. We like a lot of ideas the Democrats have. We mm-hmm. do like some of these ideas over here, though, that the Republicans have. Let's give them a little bit of a balance here. And that's what they did. And that's why I'm saying, like, you see the, you see Cortez in there. You see all these female house members in there because this is what they did. And by the way, I think the way that they did it to make Nancy Pelosi the house speaker was intelligent. They said, she will put you in there for four years, but then after that, you need to be done with house speaker. And I think that's a great idea because here's the problem, Chris. Mm-hmm. You got, you got, no, they couldn't even, they couldn't even find somebody to, to challenge Nancy Pelosi. They wanted to not let her come in, but they couldn't find anybody to challenge her. Mm-hmm. Because that, that was the one thing they were, that, that's the one thing the new, like CNN went in there and they're like, guys, who are you choosing to go up against Nancy Pelosi? Oh, we don't know who to put up against her. Mm-hmm. But you're challenging her. Well, we don't know who to put up, but you're not answering my question. Who's challenging her? You see what I'm saying, dude? Like, have her show you how to be a Speaker of the House, how to to navigate the House. Mm -hmm. And then in four years, somebody can be Speaker of the House that's appropriate. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if if a Cortez would be appropriate for Speaker of the House, but I do think that there is somebody in there that could do the job if trained right. Yeah. I mean, she's she's, she's still learning the rope. She's still, you know, she's still... uh... You know, she has to earn her stripes first. She has to. She has well, to. I, yeah, she's definitely learning because there's some things that you shouldn't say 
especially in this time, you got to support your party. I'm not saying that everything that your party does is correct and you shouldn't be happy about it, but don't be public about it. Mm -hmm. I think, I think that's the one thing that I don't like about her is, you know, like how she was saying, like, you know, you guys are all in here with me. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. That's not the mentality you need to have. The mentality you need to have is I don't agree with you necessarily. However, let's come together as a party, figure out our differences and move forward with what we can do. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. This is the way that the Congress should be working. She wants to have all these green things and the environment happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. But the Republicans want, I don't know, the, they want their border fence. Okay, how can we come together and, and, and make this happen? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what should be going on. The same thing with the shutdown right now. That's what should be happening. Yeah. And nobody's doing it. <laughs> and the episode is like, like, it's like in between episodes, there's a the fucking government still shut down. You know, it's like we take forever in between episodes and even in between that we're more efficient than the fucking government. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I'm sure we don't want to, we're not going to talk about that too much tonight, but the yeah. one thing I do want to say is, is I, I think that the Democrats are doing a good job by saying, listen, you can't be, uh, we don't need a border wall, which is true. Mm. I mean, they, they found last week, they found like three or four tunnels alone. Yeah. So it's like, but as far as, as, as far as this, the shutdown is, is, eh, is concerned, you know, for me, yes, they should be stopping him from using money for a wall. That's stupid. But at a certain point, by the end of this month, which we're what, like 10 days away, mm -hmm. they need to come up with a solution because then, then it's to me the democrats need to, it's going to be their fault as well you know okay you've stood your ground that's that's fine you guys have stood your ground i commend you guys you've made you've done what you need to do now you guys need to come together and say this is how much this is how much of the pie you get for your border wall this is how much we get for daca this is how much we get for any any kids and whatnot like some of the things that trump said on saturday night i agree with them but not in the context that he was putting them in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So all that stuff that Trump said, yes, but why don't we do this? Why don't we open the government, work those all out, and then when we vote to for these things, we extend it through the end of the year so that these people don't have to worry about this anymore this year. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, so... I mean, look, we've been, <laughs> we've, we've been talking, talking for a an lot hour. of fucking politics. Don't worry, I have yeah. plenty of beautiful nerdy stuff that we'll totally balance out the other half of this episode. Oh, is it beautiful? Ton of nerdy shit. Well, let yeah. me, let me ask you this question. Before we go any farther, how much, mm. how much nerdy news do you have? Oh, I got plenty of stuff. I got. Like, could we fill another hour with, an, with nerdy stuff? Cause I feel like we could do part one and part two on uh, this. I mean, I mean, I want to record it now. I got the fucking, I'm flowing, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right, so I think with that, we'll be back with more dick and fart jokes. This episode of Two Strangers, One Podcast is brought to you by Comics Etc., 1115 East Main and North Goodman at the Hungerford Building, door number 8. Find out more information at comicsetc.biz or like them on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash comicsetc1. Did you ever see a film at such a young age it left you traumatized with cinematic wounds? Uh, necrophilia. Uh, yeah. uh, uh. It's a dead issue, man. Don't don't push it. Cinema Psyops is a weekly podcast documenting an ongoing experiment on the mind of an unwilling test subject. No one should have to watch this movie. Oh, no one should have to watch this. No one should have to watch this movie. Surprisingly, it's not a topic that a lot of people really want to tackle. I'm shocked, prudes. I know, really. Right? It's the next sexual frontier that no one wants to explore. I am, in the most sincerest of senses, disappointed in you. It takes a powerful goddess like Connie, jam her arm down the monster's throat and kill it. Oh, I'm still tripping out over that. Even as a kid, I was like, I gotta find a girl like that. Every week, I, I get a new look of disappointment that I never thought I could get it's out of it. unimaginable. At 12 years old, you should not be watching this movie. Obviously. At 13, you should not be. 14, you should be. I'm not entirely sure even 17-year-olds should be watching this movie. Just because you're offended by something doesn't mean that you have the right to demand that it doesn't exist. Watching this film again, I had all of this, like, little nerd glee with everything that kept Little history doll yeah, popping up absolutely. at you. So I totally loved this film. 
Hey, I know why you, you know, couldn't see that. It's because your brain's warped from watching this shit at 12 years old. Yeah, this is this is a rough movie. I told you ahead of time when we were getting ready to do it that it was How be did a rough you watch movie. this shit at 12? Because physical wounds heal, cinematic ones don't. Listen to Cinema Psyops. And we're back. All right, Paul. Uh, the first, the first hour was heavy. We got, we got, we had ups, we had our downs. We That's talked. What she said it's, it was heavy. <laughs> we got very fucking deep and political. I got all fucking angry. Let's fucking speak to the lighter side. The whole reason and we and do while we show. were on commercial break, we made out, but that's fine. <laughs> um, the escapism. I love my escapism because fucking life sucks. So I have to escape. Uh, this weekend, uh, Netflix, uh, released Punisher season two. And I fucking gobbled it up. I, I watched, I, in two days, I watched all 13 episodes. Um, and the funny because like, I've, I, like I'm halfway through Jessica Jones. You know, Daredevil was good. Don't get me wrong. I like Daredevil, but you know, I had, I couldn't watch more than two episodes of Daredevil without, you know, I'd have to take a break after two episodes of Daredevil. And it's weird because, you know, the Punisher was also very violent, but I don't know. It just, the characters in, in the show seem intriguing. It is a little bent out of shape because in this one you have like, and it's not really spoiling. There's like the Russian mafia. There's like this weird religious extreme group, e- e- extremist group. Um, what's the other? There's like, there's like three major criminal organizations in this one. Um, oh, wait, can I, oh, sorry. Can I, can I, can I say real quick, like, uh-huh. Fuck Netflix for raising their price. <laughs> yeah, so that's sort of uh, that's. I mean, I have I kind of have that in my notes later on where uh, Netflix and once again, and this is sort of what I said exactly the other uh, couple episodes back is that Netflix is really relying on itself being, you know, it's they're going to be the generators of their own content. I mean, yes, they're going to play shows from other networks and stuff like that, but I think <clears throat> they're really buying up all these properties. Or they're, they're, they're starting all these own Netflix original things because I think they want to be, they want to hold all the fucking cards. And, and, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, if that, I mean, they are kind of shooting, but then by them holding all their cards, I mean, you know, right now we have, you know, now that fucking CBS is, you know, pulling out and, and Disney's going to be pulling out soon. And, and that's and, what she said. <laughs> And what, that was also, this is sort of in my notes also, uh, you know, NBC <clears throat> is looking into having its own streaming service and <sighs> it's going to terminate, it's going to pull the so office stupid. out of Netflix. So and, stupid. and, and, you know, Netflix, uh, you know, the office for Netflix. And it's funny because, you know, uh, and, and once again, this is all sort of new to me, like going on Netflix and stuff like that. But I always, I always look at what's trending on Netflix. And The Office, a show that hasn't been on TV in what six years or something like that, I, you know, 2013, 14, five years or something. You know, the show hasn't been on in years, and still it is trending well, on Netflix on a daily fucking basis. Can I can I ask a question real quick? Uh-huh. Is is it is it trending on the homepage or is it trending in general? I mean, it's I, I I'm going by what I see on my homepage. On my, hmm. I mean, I, I don't, you know, yeah, if there's, so, enough, if there's so, other demographics, or, but I mean, I'm assuming if it's saying was trending, that's a, that's a well, system wide no, no, no. so, trend, you know? <clears throat> so what they do is they do this thing where they're, they obviously have like the featured stuff and then they have this, what is it? This, um, the stuff that trends, like it's quote unquote trending but it's something that you're watching kind of deal. Oh, I guess, so yeah, that, so it's that's sort of tailored, difference. it's tailored towards me, but what's trending Correct. that I would. Yeah, it's, it's like Twitter. Twitter has tailored trending. Yeah. That and that would is. make sense because like I watched the last couple of seasons on the, of the office on Netflix. So I never got a chance to finish watching, you know, I, I like, I have like the first like five seasons of, of the office on, on DVD, uh, you know, but I, and then, so like when I first got Netflix, I'm like, all right, I'll finish watching the other, you know, four or five seasons. I, mean, I think there's what, nine, 10 seasons of, or 11. I don't know. There's a ridiculous amount of seasons of, of the office. So maybe, yeah, maybe it is custom tailored to me, but I always see it, you know, and, and, you know, I don't think, I don't think they're, they're fudging their numbers. You know, they, they always put it, it I always see it in trending because sometimes, you know, you see you on trending just to see if there's something new, something you haven't gotten your eyes upon, you know, obviously, I mean, like I like a lot of comedian specials and, and, you know, and I notice a lot of my shit on comedian specials, but I talk to other friends that have like, you know, they watch documentaries. So I guess they're, you know, their, their Netflix feed is littered with documentaries. Um, my point being is that, that the office is always trending. Now, Netflix has fucking struck back 
And do you know that now they're doing a show with Steve Carell? Yes. Uh, they, they, and it's, it's going to be based on <laughs> our wonderful president's, president's idea of a, of a space force. That's going to be so hilarious. And, Steve. you know, Steve Carell being, you know, you know, you know, this almost seems like a sequel to The Office. You know, I'm, I'm very, <clears> it's very likely he's going to be, you know, he plays, uh, you know, that, that bumbling idiot who's, who thinks he's doing the right thing, but, you know, in, in, in other words, doing totally the wrong thing, you know, uh, and especially, you know, like you couldn't put The Office on TV today because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of people would get fucking triggered, uh, by, you know, you know, all the gay jokes they did on Oscar and all of that's what she said. And, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, Michael, and it's so funny that, you know, a lot of women love that show, but if the office was on TV now, you know, I think women <laughs> would be protesting and demanding it to be removed from the air. So, uh, you know, when you're on Netflix, you know, once again, you know, it's sort of, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can say whatever the fuck you want. So, I mean, I, and I don't think they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot. I don't think this is going to be raunchy. You know, we're not going to be seeing tits or blood or, or anything like that. But, you know, you can be a little offbeat. You could be a little off color because, you know, on Netflix, you know, money talks and bullshit walks, you know, and you don't have to satisfy, you know, the investor. When you're mm-hmm. on NBC, once again, like I said, if The Office was on TV today, if, if they introduced a brand new show, if The Office never existed and they existed the exact same show today on TV, it would be, it would be, it would have gone viral in a bad way and, and, and the show would be demanded to be taken off the air. Um, all right. So, uh, so there's that. So once again, finished watching Publisher, Punisher. Oh, and like you said, they did raise their, they're going to raise their prices. They're also going to stop the, sharing of accounts which i think is going to be yeah. hard I, I i think it it's one of those things where they they're, they're going to grandfather it in this is what this this i guarantee you this is what they're going to do they're going to all right all the people have their accounts now they're going to come up with some like weird plan where they're going to go hey you know <clears throat> right, okay we raised our prices right they're going to raise their prices first then about like six months down the line they're gonna, like you could renew your subscription to to netflix for just, you know, it's like, let's say you go up to $18 a month. They'll go, we're going to renew it to $6 a month, but you have to sign a brand new contract. And when you sign that contract, that new contract is going to have, you can't share your accounts. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to raise the price, yeah. get people fucking, you know, and people are going to be pissed off and they're like, oh yeah, you can lower your account. But all, you know, all those, you know, the, you know, those four other deadbeats that are sharing your, <laughs> your account, <laughs> you're going to have to tell them to go fuck themselves and get their own accounts. And think about it, you know, if if they raise it from let's just say 12 to 18, I think that's what it is something like that, you know. Mm-hmm. And then then the person who's actually paying for the account says, "Okay, I get it for 6." Those other four people that get kicked off, if they're addicted to Netflix and they will come back, then all four of them are paying $6 now. So when they went from 12 to 18, you get what I'm saying? Like the the the, the numbers speak for themselves. If if the other accounts you know, once again, I'm using my boy's account, you know, and, and I'm using my boss's account. If he kicks me <laughs> off, you know, I'm a fucking junkie. I'm addicted. I may just go back to Netflix <clears throat> for my own account. You know, if he tells me, Chris, you know, sorry, I can't, you know, you got to fuck <clears throat> He's your own account now. So I may do it. <laughs> if, if, if Netflix would do what, um, what Hulu did where they, they, they did like this Black month. Friday sale where it's like a dollar per month for 12 months. Mm hmm. I would I would get that all day long, dude. Yeah, and and that's, sign and, me up. And the whole thing is that when you do something like that, they can you know what it is because Netflix. I mean, right now all these services are month to month. They really are. There's no contractual obligation, so it's sort of like at least a Hulu. They're like, look, okay, fine. We may have it may look like we've lost money from you know from going from whatever ten dollars to a dollar a month, but mm-hmm. you know all of these other people who generally wouldn't have used us have signed up. And now we have that guarantee. Now those people are contractually obligated to pay us, you know, the dollar a month. And you know, it sounds ridiculous, but at least you know you, you can count your, you can count your chickens before they hatch. If you do something right. like that, you know, and, and and you know, hopefully, you know, not I mean not foolishly, but you know, they're they're smart to kind of. And that's I mean that's the way sales work. You get you get the asses in the doors, you know. And once again, I become addicted to fucking Hulu. Also, <laughs> you know, for all these years I went without using these services, and you know. And in my opinion, Hulu is better than Netflix, but that's just because I like watching TV shows. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like a lot of the a lot of the TV 
stations are affiliated with Hulu, so they put a lot of their stuff on there. Yeah. Rick and Morty's on there. Yeah. Um, actually, Funimation's putting a lot of their anime on there too. So yeah, there's that as well. Happy, you don't know how the the fucking the the the, the what do they call that the, the the oxytocin like when someone has a reward sent there in their brain like how drug addicts get addicted and how they get like mice addicted to fucking sugar and shit like that when i yeah. open hulu and it says like new episodes of my favorite shows you know what i'm saying like you know like yeah. in the next because fuck you know orville <clears throat> is so fucking good this year you know the good place so fucking good this year you know uh hulu original uh future man which is a uh, future man's okay the, the first season of future man was so fucking good the second season is a little eh, but you know it's getting a little better but you don't know the fucking that 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 fucking reward center fucking prim, you know <laughs> primitive brain thing that when I turn on Hulu and it says you have new episodes of the shows that you like because my, the way my schedule is and you know I don't watch everything at once and I'd much rather right. watch Hulu in the morning the next day and watch new episodes of Orville and I jizz in my fucking pants you know and once again I'm fucking addicted it, it's it's a fucking addictive fucking substance and, and god damn it you know if my boy and once again if my boss tells me Chris you gotta fucking go then I have to fucking shell out my money like a fucking common person <laughs> Um, all right, let's move on. Spider-Man Far From Home trailer uh, dropped uh, since our last episode. Spider-Man, uh, Tom Holland, Spider-Man mm-hmm. going to going to Europe, uh, seeing Mysterio played by Jake Gyllenhaal. Which, you know, for, for those who aren't super giant uh, <laughs> Spider-Man fans like we are, you know, Jake Gyllenhaal when when Tobey Maguire almost didn't do Spider-Man three. They were just about to put fucking Jake Gyllenhaal in there, <laughs> you know. I think I think uh, uh, Tobey Maguire hurt his shoulder, and I, the, his his management team had decided to say, "Hey, you know, they try to use that as a tactic to ask for more money. Like, oh, he can't be Spider Man if he's he can't be Spider Man if he's uh if his arm hurts or whatever." And so Sony kind of backed up and said, "You know, fuck you. We'll get Jake Gyllenhaal to do it." So you know, Jake Gyllenhaal has kind of a history with uh, Spider Man. And for him coming in as Mysterio, and this is sort of my take on it. And of course, I'm just saying this on the internet, and hopefully, I'm not spoiling. I don't. I can't spoil it because I don't know anything. But I think the other characters we see in the movie, Molten Man, Hydro Man, and the Return of the Sandman, I think those are all special effects. I think those are all. I think in this story, they're going to have Mysterio be the way Syndrome was in The Incredibles. Or like uh, Mr. Glass was an Unbreakable, uh, where he's pretending these things are real, or he's he's making you know maybe he's even doing damage so he can be the hero, so he can show up and save the fucking mm. day. Okay, Which, I think that's gonna be the twist, and hopefully because you know in the comics you know Mysterio is known as he's like a Hollywood special effects guy, and and you know he knows engineering and he <laughs> knows he knows how to make um, holograms and things that look very very real. So I think, you know, in a movie where, once again, they say Far From Home, the movie's called Far From Home, you know, uh, all the Avengers, I mean, of course, you know, the Avengers went to Sokovia and Age of Ultron, but the Avengers are pretty much America-based. You know, there are no Avengers in Europe, <laughs> or at least not anymore. I mean, you know, uh, well, what well, I think, well, no, the Vision and the Vision and Scarlet Witch were hiding out in Europe. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, in a, in a world where, you know, half the fucking Avengers disappeared, you know, because obviously, look, obviously Spider-Man has come back because, you know, <laughs> he turned into the dust in Infinity War, but apparently he's back for this movie. But I think uh, I, I have a feeling that, and especially, you know, we've already seen Sandman. You know, and and also keep in mind that Sony is giving the Spider-Man franchise to Marvel after this movie. You know, that was the contract, that was the agreement. So I don't think they're going to introduce three fucking major villains. Well, excuse me, four major villains if you actually include, um, you know, uh, uh, Mysterio. I think they're going to. You know, these are all illusions. These are things that he has put. Uh, you know, quote unquote, attacking Europe so he can show up and save the day because he, you know, and it's funny because you see these comparisons people are putting up online. And once again, I'm super nerdy. So the, I, the, the, the communities I belong to put this shit up where he kind of he does things a little bit like Thor. He does things a little bit like Iron Man. He does a, a couple things like Doctor Strange. He's sort of like right. he's doing like a mashup of all the Avengers. But, you know, there's going to be something like, you know, he's going to. And once again, I you know I think the twist is none of it's real. It's all him 
pretending that he's fighting these bad guys so he can build a reputation. I'm sorry. Anything you want to add? <laughs> Anything you want to add for the the, the Spider Man Far From Home? <laughs> so basically the um what was it? Um the whole thing with uh Nick Fury showing up. Nick Fury That was showing pretty up. cool. That was Happy pretty Hogan cool. showing up. What's that? Happy Hogan, you know, uh, Iron Man's chauffeur and, and bodyguard. Eh, fuck him. I don't care about him. Um <laughs> Dude, if, if without John Favreau we don't have the fucking Marvel you know, talk about 10-year challenge. You know, 10 years ago, we just had Iron Man. Now we have fucking, you know, 21, 20. Well, actually, no, with with Infinity War, Captain America, I mean, Captain Marvel and Spider-Man Far From Home. Now we're at, you know, we have 23 movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So that's that's the real 10-year challenge. <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah. But um, so there's so there's that. Um, and I also like the, the whole thing with, um, you know, him... What is it? He has like, what, two or three like different suits. One of them oh, is yeah. a stealth suit. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely all for that, all that stuff. I so, all those toys. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, as much as I'm excited for the movie, I mean, let's also be a little realistic. I mean, you want to say cynical, but yep, you know, we got to sell, you know, black suit Spider Man. If we're, you know, if we're not going to get a Venom, a proper mm-hmm. Venom. Uh, in, in the Spider-Man universe. So as of right now, you know, at least we could get a black suit Spider-Man, even if it is, you know, stealth suit, uh, which is going to be interesting because, you know, if you watch the trailer, he doesn't bring, he purposefully leaves the suit behind. I think Aunt May puts it in his suitcase anyway, but then he, then he doesn't even use it or, you know, part of when he's in Europe, he, he puts on the stealth suit. So that's going to be interesting to, to see what, what's that all about. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, at least and we see Aunt May, obviously, you know, when we ended Spider-Man Homecoming, she was sort of, what the fuck? <laughs> and so now she's yeah, obviously, exactly. she's accepted it. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, there's all that. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited for that. Uh, Ghostbusters 3, or should I say uh, a new Ghostbusters? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't anything like too extravagant yet, so... Well, yeah, I mean, it's a teaser trailer, but I mean, you know, behind the scenes, and it's funny because Dan Aykroyd was talking, you know, Dan Aykroyd was talking shit when they did the 2016, and I thought he was just talking shit to talk shit. You know, Dan Aykroyd has a couple of fucking screws loose. So, uh, you know, it's funny to see that I guess they actually were doing something behind the scenes, you know, uh, written and directed by Jason Reitman, Ivan Reitman's, you know, son, uh, the heir apparent, as, you know, some would say, um, and this has nothing to do with the 2016 Ghostbusters, you know, and all these, oh, you know, and there are people like, and, and, you know, and obviously like Leslie Jones spouted off against it saying like, oh, this is because Trump is in office. And no, it's the fans of the series, fans of the franchise wanted to see a continuation of their favorite characters. And, and, you know, the biggest slap in the face is they actually had people from the movie, you know, they had you know, Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Ernie Hudson and, 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 and Annie Potts and Sigourney Weaver in the fucking movie and, and didn't <clears> use them. <throat> this movie easily could have been a handing off of the baton from one generation to the next. Paul Feig and the other woman that wrote the movie, you know, decided to fucking go their own fucking way and, and piss off. You know, it's the same thing like what goes on with Star Wars. You know, these people, you know, if you want to do something that's super and wonderful and empowering for women, go and do your own fucking thing. Go go and do your own fucking project. But when you're when you're when you're taking a franchise like Ghostbusters, like Star Wars, stop! Don't change the fucking protagonist on us. People watch. People want to see Star Wars. You know, the, Disney paid four billion dollars or whatever for to, for Star Wars because there's a fan base there. They know people are going to show up. Don't switch. The, don't flip the script. Like you know, like a Force Awakens. You know, where all these people were so excited to see Luke Skywalker, and Luke Skywalker's in the last fucking thirty seconds of the movie. And the same thing with the Ghostbusters. People have been dying for a Ghostbusters fucking, you know, a, a continuation of the story. And, 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 you know, and now, don't get me wrong. Uh, sources also have that they're casting for the movie and they're casting, they're looking for young people. So this isn't going to be, this isn't going to be, you know, Bill Murray and Dan Aykroyd and, and Ernie Hudson running around or at least if they are they're going to be doing the beginning but it's it, this is going to be the proper handing off of the baton and I, I don't know if you remember years ago 
there was a rumor that it was going to be uh, Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill and um, maybe not James Franco, but the other tall guy from uh, uh, Sarah Marshall, forgetting Sarah Marshall, the guy yeah. from uh, whatever that show is, uh, How I Met Your Mother. So, you know, the, the rumor was it was going to be them back in the day where it was going to be a passing of the baton from the old generation to the new. Because obviously, yeah, we can't have Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray <laughs> running around. That shit, you know, they're old fucking men. But, you know, give us a, give us a story where, you know, you can continue. You know, Creed, you take a movie like Creed, you know, you put a whole new fucking guy in it. But, you know, you still have Sylvester Stallone in it. And it's the passing of the torch. You know, they're doing, you know, they're the, the, the next Terminator movie that comes out totally disregards... You know, you know, episode, you know, uh, you know, the part three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever fucking move, whatever they made, and it's going to be a sequel to part, um, to part two, the new Halloween movie that just came out. They disregard three, four, five, and six, and they say it's going to be a or two, three, four, five, and it's a continuation. So all these movies, they're doing the course correction. They're they're giving the fans what the fuck they want, and 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 the fans are are rewarding them for it. So and then I heard from I put up a recent thing recently they're going to rebooting they're rebooting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, and and well, that's going to be from the guy <sighs> shit what I had here in my notes from the guy who did uh, shit oh from the producers who did the Quiet Place they're right. doing Teenage, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <clears throat> and 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 even Bumblebee. Bumblebee is a bit of a course correction. Unfortunately, it's still connected to the Michael Bay universe, but you know they're kind of doing their own thing, but sort of. You know, they put in the 80s. So, you know, the, the the movie studios are wising up and stop trying to force a fucking agenda down our throats. You know, I'm going to get all political here again. <laughs> Don't get me started on a fucking Gillette. <laughs> Forcing an agenda, you know, and all of a sudden, yeah, men, toxic masculinity needs to go away. Yeah, but how about you lower the price of the fucking, the pink, the, the pink Gillettes that you have that you actually charge more for the fucking pink ladies Gillettes than you do for the fucking actual men's Gillettes. Oh, you don't see that shit happening. Oh, but they're going to spank their fucking male customer. Oh, wait, I don't mean to get political. I'm sorry. But, you know, they, they're they oh, men, toxic men are toxic and they're assholes and we don't want their fucking money anymore. You know, oh, we're gonna start, people are going to start burning their shit like the, guy, like the guys who are burning their Nikes after Colin Kaepernick. But that's a whole other story. Let's leave. I don't mean to say that. But I'm just saying is in Hollywood, they're doing the proper course <clears> correction. <throat> if you're going to do a franchise, continue the franchise with what the fucking people want. Stop switching. Don't bait and switch us. Don't say this is, you know, this is sort of like what you want, but this we're going to put our own fucking agenda to it. No. Give it to the girls who want. You want to do something with strong, fucking powerful women? Do your own fucking franchise. I'm pretty sure Disney, if they had $4 billion, they could have sank that into their own, create a brand new universe from scratch and have, you know, you know, Ray from Star Wars, you know, have, you know, have their own version of Ray, whatever she is now with Star Wars, you know, with that $4 billion, they sank into Star Wars. They could have sank that into their own original project. But then again, you do that and you end up getting fucking Avatar. <laughs> um, a new, all right, let's move on. A, a new Captain Marvel trailer and a Shazam trailer, and and mm. so both of them and you know and it's, you know you remember Captain Sh- I mean Shazam was up until recently called Captain Marvel until there was lawsuits and stuff like that. So in my opinion, there are two Captain Marvel movies coming out this year. Um, you know, once again, you know Marvel they have my money. I'm gonna go see Captain Marvel. You know, the movie could be called Captain Marvel. Fuck you, Chris Cologne. I'm still. <laughs> you know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fucking go see it no matter what. Um, and Shazam looks fucking good. You know, Shazam looks fun. It looks, you know, it's gonna be, and it's gonna be riding the wave that came with Aquaman. You know, Aquaman, you know, won a lot of hearts back. And, you know, and this is, I mean, even though this movie is really not technically, I mean, it's, it's in the same universe. You know, I don't think we're gonna have, you know, I don't think Henry Cavill's gonna do a cameo or, you know, they might mention, you know, Luther, Lex Luther or Bruce Wayne or something like that. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, it is connected, but, you know, they're not going to shove, they're not going to shove the connected universe down our throats in this movie. But, you know, it looks good. It looks fun. It looks the way a fucking movie is supposed to look, you know, give me excitement, give me adventure, give me, you know, give me escapism. Don't stop fucking dredging me down. Life is depressing enough as it is. <laughs> um... I bet it is. I went to go see, and it's funny because I don't, we I don't think we've ever released all the all the interviews <laughs> from Comic Con, and not to not to put a fire under your ass, but uh, they had released what on, fire uh, for they had released uh, the the Reign of the Supermen, and on last Monday, I, and well on Tuesday, excuse me, but last Monday before the DVDs came out, I went to the theater and I saw it was a double feature. It was 
uh, The Death of Superman, an animated movie, and that's been out on DVD and Blu-ray for a while. And now they released The Reign of the Superman, which is the continuation of the Superman story with, you know, the Eradicator, um, Cyborg Superman, the Superboy, or I, I like to call him the Metropolis Kid because that's what they call him in the comics, and Steel. And so it was a movie sort of, and of course, I mean, a movie being a movie, you know, it, it kind of had to take its own liberties with the storyline. But, you know, we had, we had interviews with some of the guys from that and, and, and we really got to, we really sh- should release those interviews from Comic Con. Um, I gotta say, I saw it and although I enjoyed myself, you know, and it hates me to say because I, I, all the people involved, except for the fucking, except for the guy who actually did the character design, he was a little bit of a miserable prick. Uh, and you know that's saying something when I call you a miserable prick. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, all the people involved with the project are, are good, decent people. And, uh, and it was great meeting with them at Comic Con. Uh, but the movie wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. You know, I'm a big, sci- I'm a big, uh, Steel fan. Not Steel, I mean, not that I'm a big fan, but you know, I, I wanted, I, I felt like they should have given, they should have given a Steel a little bit more of a fair shake. You know, uh, Superboy, they kind of, they, they do right in the movie. Uh, the Eradicator, sort of, I don't like what they did to his character. And then Cyborg Superman is a Cyborg Superman. So, I mean, it, it, and, and that's the crazy thing is that what happens right after the movie, I sneak in to go see Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> <sighs> and oh my God, that movie was so fucking good, you know. And, and let me tell you, it's like, I thought, um, I thought like I, I I thought man I'm gonna walk in and probably see the last 20 minutes. No, I saw like the last like hour plus uh, of Into the Spider Verse. It is so fucking good. <sighs> Chris, I don't know what to fucking do with you. <laughs> Look, as soon as I get paid more, I'll actually pay for my fucking bullshit, entertainment. You will. <laughs> Fucking bullshit, you will. But look, I'm going to a theater on a fucking Monday. You know, I went and and uh... nope, I don't want to hear it. Nope, Mm-mm. nope. At least I paid for the double feature. Um... No, you didn't. Probably not. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm, I'm almost a here. I'm almost an emerald. I'm I'm one movie away from being an emerald member of the of the real oh, crown club. <laughs> God. Um, all right. So uh, so one thing. Okay, so we had the Captain America. Um. Oh wow! I'm actually almost done with my stuff. Um, Holy shit! Uh, for some reason, where the fuck this came from? And this is not nerdy news in general, but sort of nerd adjacent. Uh, Chris Pratt is marrying Catherine Schwarzenegger. Yes. So, like, I, I guess apparently, I had no idea that he had broken up with uh, Anna Faris. Oh yeah, no, no, no. That that was like almost a year ago, I think. Yeah, but like. Dude, he fucking does not. And the funny thing is that when you follow Chris Pratt, he's very, he's a good old boy, you know. He's like religious, and he's like a like he's one of those guys that are like way too nice. Like I think you know one day we're gonna find out he has fucking bodies in his basement one day. But you know, I don't trust people that are that fucking nice. I want you got to be a little bit of a scumbag. Um, but well, you know, basically what happened was is him and his wife didn't i guess they just because of how busy he was and whatnot like they just couldn't meet eye to eye and i'm just it, it sucks but yeah, well dude two of the other podcasts that i li- there i listen to there's one uh, there's a podcast I, obviously i listen to kevin smith's podcast kevin smith's smodcast and there's another co- podcast i listen to called about last night and mm-hmm. on about last night, about three or four weeks ago, they had Anna Faris on for maybe like 20 minutes. And then on this most, as we're recording this, the most current episode of Smodcast, they have Anna Faris on this. She is an insufferable cunt. Oh my God. She will not like, you know, she thinks everything's about her. And it's, and of course, obviously, look, we're doing a podcast. I, I'm a fan of Kevin Smith. He, obviously, if you're doing a podcast, you talk a lot. That's what you do. Or at least when the mic is on, you talk a lot. And I know I talk a fucking lot, but she does not shut the fuck up. She does not give, Ke- you know, and it's funny because she's a guest on Kevin's show. And that's sort of the joke. Even in the beginning, they're like, we're going to keep stepping over. Because apparently she has her own podcast. But Anna mm-hmm. Ferris is insufferably fucking cunty. And for Chris Pratt, Chris Pratt, God bless him that he got away from that fucking monstrosity because she is annoying as fuck. And then, you know, and then to make it that matters worse, she thinks everything's about her. And I, I know that sounds like a lot coming from me because I know everything's about me. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're admitting to it finally. <laughs> um, so, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, so once again, thank God for Chris Pratt getting away. But it's going to be weird that Chris Pratt, like his father-in-law is going to be Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's like that's. I love I love the idea of that, 
you know, I, I want to see that as a movie. I want to see a Meet the Parents style movie with Chris Pratt and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, you know, I, I just I don't know about you sometimes. <laughs> but make it like an action comedy, you know, where like Chris Pratt has to impress his. <sighs> it would be like a True Lies um, Part Two, except you know, like a Meet the Parents, Meet the Fockers meets True Lies. Come on, who wouldn't see Chris Pratt and Arnold Schwarzenegger in the same movie? That would fucking that would sell billions of fucking tickets. Uh, look, Disney, call me. I'll fucking let's, let's make this happen. <laughs> um, and then my, I'm actually my last note, uh, and we're recording this. Well, we we missed it yesterday, whatever. Uh, the the Family Guy Trump episode. Have you seen it? <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to, but yes, I will. Yeah, I think it's called. I will Trump, watch it. I think it's called <laughs> Trump Guy. But it, it came out last week, not this week. This week was a whole episode with Stewie going to a, a psychiatrist, which I think it was a repeat. But uh, oh my god. The and and you know and, and as soon as that episode was over, I'm like, oh my god, fucking Fox is going to cancel Family Guy. But I've totally forgot that you know Fox is going to be selling all their intellectual property to Disney mm-hmm. pretty soon. So I think I think uh, Seth MacFarlane seeing that on the horizon said, fuck it, we're going to do a whole episode just digging into Trump because that episode dug the fuck into Trump and 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 you know and then in traditional Family Guy style where Peter usually fights the giant chicken, there is literally a six minute Peter Donald Trump fight, you know, in the, in the total tradition of Peter fighting the fucking giant chicken, which I think is fucking hilarious. You know, the whole episode totally fucking digs in deep and, 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 you know, uh, that episode should win a fucking award. <laughs> you know, of course that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, anything else you want to bring up while we, while we, <laughs> no, I'm we good. wrap up? So we got, I got, a, got a lot of shit out of our, our of our chest. I'm glad we decided to record tonight. Um, uh, so, oh yeah. So well, he's the one that doesn't have to be to to, to work at 6 a.m. Folks here. Mm-hmm. Well, technically, I have to be at work at 8:30 a.m. and it's like 12:30 now. Yeah, you get two more hours of sleep. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have to drive. I could just roll out of bed and turn on my computer. Uh, <laughs> I just keep hearing. I just keep hearing. Grab the knife, Paul, and stab him. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, all right. Well, so I, I. I, I should say it again just for proper protocol. Uh, let's wrap this up. That's, That's what, what she, she said. said. <laughs> Please visit two strangers one podcast.net where you can find all things show related. You can find links to our, our iTunes page. If you have an iPhone, an iPad or iPod, you could download us there on iTunes. Um, which I, I recently found one of my old iTunes accounts because I, and, and like I had a bunch of, there was a TV show in the, in the mid nineties called the state. It was on MTV. And it's all the people who did like Reno 911 and like the guys who did, you know, the writers of Night at the Museum. Uh, one of the guys is on Brooklyn Nine Nine right now, you know, but it, like I totally forgot that I had a bunch of episodes of the state from iTunes from just bringing up an iTunes story. Um, but uh, if, you, what, if you have once again, subscribe to iTunes, you can subscribe to us. Um, if you don't have an iPhone, an iPad, or an iPod, if you have an Android device, you can uh, find us on the Stitcher app. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-E-R, the Stitcher app for Android devices. Uh, you can download the episodes. Uh, what I like to do is you put it on uh, Listen Offline and uh, Listen Later and Available Offline. We can download the episodes when you're in your Wi-Fi spot, when you're out and about. You don't have to kill your data. You don't have to kill your battery. Listen to episodes of that way. Uh, you know... Uh, you know, Kevin Smith's, you know, or Joe Rogan or any other major podcast. And of course, Paul's other baby, the Tsunami Faithful podcast, also all available on Stitcher. If you want to write to us, you can write to us at <clears throat> two strangers, one podcast at gmail.com, which I actually surprised. I forgot to check if, if we have any Oscar letters this week, but if you want to write to us, you can write to us at two strangers, one podcast at gmail.com all spelled out. Of course, we want your money. We need, and Paul, I'm like really, really close to doing the Patreon uh deal, deal with me here uh you know i got i also have a lot of fucking like comic-con swag and and like comic books and shit like that so i'm thinking about maybe doing a patreon and like giving people my comic books like just so i can get it out of my house so i gotta like have a little less clutter in my house you know new year new me <laughs> oh, <laughs> and God. maybe you know, get rid of my shit so i think i was like hmm, maybe if i do like a maybe if we do a patreon 
you know, since we don't, because we really don't have like you know early release content or something. But like you know, if you contribute five bucks, hey, here's a fucking comic book. You know, it's just going to be sitting in my house collecting dust anyway. So here, you fucking get it. Or you want you know you want a green you want a green lantern button? Here's a fucking green lantern button. Um, okay, just check the email. Nope, no letters from from Oscar. I should check the spam folder just in case. Uh, <laughs> um, of course, we want your money. We need your money. But until I set up my, until I actually do set up a Patreon, uh, you can uh, find us on facebookcom slash two strangers one podcast. Once again, all spelled out: facebookcom slash two strangers one podcast. Support the show. Like our page. Share our page. Uh, you know, I might have been burned some bridges, so maybe we're not sure. <laughs> you know, we'll probably have a few less listeners next, next week. Uh, but, uh, you know, feel free, uh, to like and subscribe and, and share the page. Let people know that this is what you listen to and they're good. This was actually a really good episode, in my opinion. Um, very and, informative. Yeah. And, you know, maybe if we get a Patreon, you know, and if I throw Paul a couple bucks, you know, and he doesn't have to drag himself like, oh, I don't want to do the fucking show, Chris, you're an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I want to go to sleep, Chris. At least if I go look. Yeah, guys, guys, remember that. Remember that. Give the Paul money will go bucks. to me. The money will go to me. So that's why you listen to the podcast. Yeah, give, give, give Paul a couple bucks. Say, look, look, look don't fuck, just relax. Here's a couple dollars for your troubles. Um, but that being said, so uh, I can buy more porn. Until then, <laughs> you, you could uh, share us on Facebook. That's uh, funny. We're on Twitter at Stranger Podcast. And, um, oh, and we're also, you can follow us on, for all the episodes that aren't, and also we're on SoundCloud for both Android and, uh, iPhone devices. We're on SoundCloud. I make the available, the, the episodes available for download. And, um, I'm sorry, I got a, a burp right there. Um, Ew. and for all the episodes that aren't available <clears throat> on SoundCloud, you can go back and listen to six years of me saying plenty of horrible things that should get me fired from whatever job I have. Except now I'm working for my friend, so it's going to be really hard to get me fired now. But <laughs> I say the most horrible, horrendous fucking things. So go back and listen to all six, seven years worth of, and which is, yeah, in April, in a couple months, we'll be hitting seven years of this podcast. Um, listen to past hosts that aren't here anymore. Uh, we can, uh, so, uh, you can go and listen to us. Go on YouTube, search the Two Strangers Love Podcast. You can find our Stranger Vlogs. You can find my audio book, Odd I See a Tale from the Road. Uh, of course, I want you to buy my actual book, uh, uh, Double Jackpot. You'll hear the commercial for that. Where, uh, we'll be playing at the end of the episode. <laughs> but you can listen to, uh, you can listen to audio, my audio book, Odd I See a Tale from the Road. Uh, totally available, mm-hmm. totally for free on, 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 uh, on, I, on YouTube, excuse me, and 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 the music in the background I actually produced also. So that's you know it's my music and it's my book. I just have a, a robot reading. I have a I have a computer program reading it because I, I try to sit there and read it myself, and I just I was killing myself trying to read the book, so I just let a computer program read it. Um, I think that's everything, Paul. I acquiesced the forty user. Took you long enough. Um, <laughs> so you can find me on Twitter at Paul Piscillo. You can. Uh, email me. It's paulpascurlo at tunamifaithful.com. And of course, you can, if you are on our Discord, it's discord.com. Or Discord and uh, the Tunami Faithful Discord, and it's at paulpascurlo. Um, I don't know. Maybe Chris will start a Two Strangers, one podcast one. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was going to say. Um, oh, yeah, so, um, I've partnered with Toricon, so there's that. Oh, that's right, yeah. Uh, they, uh, we will be doing some things together. This is the first venture into many adventures I hope to have. I figured, I've been bugging, I've been starting to bug cons, like, around here. I'm like, I can help you, and some of them are just like, fuck you, Paul. Mm-hmm. And then Toricon's like, no, you have 43,000 followers on Twitter. I think you can help us. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I can. So um, it's going to be more of a lopsided thing. But, you know, I- I'd like to support people that are supporting the industry. So why not support a con that's supporting the industry? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm kind of hoping that this con will grow. And that's kind of why I'm sticking with them, too. So We'll see what happens. I may do other cons here. I may partner other cons here. I may partner with other cons somewhere else in the, the country. Um, we'll see. But you know, if they hey, if they pay and they fly me out, I don't care. <laughs> so, there you go. Awesome. Well, we certainly hope everyone listening had as much fun 
listening as they did as we did recording. Thank you for listening to Two Strangers in One Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Paul. Don't be a stranger. Peace. We're out. Bye. You should be fapping. All right, here we go, man. Go ahead. You want to read Double it? Jackpot. What is it? It is a self-published book by Christopher Cologne. Chris Cologne? Smells good to me. But- <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. That broke that fucking cold little exterior. He's like, hee hee. But it is spelled C O L O N. Him punny. But. (laughs) (laughs) Double Jackpot is a book about a comic book artist, Eric, who is in a loveless relationship with a materialist, Lynette. I I, I, Oh, fucking. Are you sure I didn't write this? Uh, I, I smell, sounds hauntingly familiar. He starts cheating on his girlfriend with a more creatively, su- sorry, creatively supportive woman, Nadia. Well, I, I gotta meet her. Where's the Nadia? There's your summer girlfriend. Summer Nadia! Is Nadia. Nadia? Yeah, I think Nadia spelled with an A. Alright. Both Lynette and, uh, Nadia play the double jackpot, the largest payout in lotto history. Much like the recent Powerball. Both girls play his birth date as the winning, re- as the winning numbers. Eric is now stuck between two of the country's richest women. Who will he choose? It's not that simple. This is a clever fucking idea, yeah, man. Is. Look at her. Fucking, she's impressed. I am. Summer, she got some summer reading. Uh, Christopher uh, Cologne smells real lovely with an original idea. Is this? I've never heard this before. I haven't either. This is a self-published book, much in the indie spirit as Kev's Clerks. Oh, you don't even need to name check me. This is just a good idea. You could stand on your own, man. You don't even have to be like, hey, remember Clerks? This is nothing like that. <laughs> this is way more original than Clerks. This is a good idea, man. Why didn't I think of this? I need something to read. This book is part of the Comic Books Heavy Metal Video Games Trilogy Book 2. Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, coming soon. Right on, man. It's part of a trilogy. This is the first part. Way to write, man. He's seeking a literary agent. Motherfuckers, anybody out there? There ain't no literary agents listening to this show. I assure you, sure. Sure. I assure you, sure. But somebody know a literary agent? Hook a motherfucker up! Chris Cologne come up with an original idea. I should tell Raskin. That's a good fucking idea, to be so honest too. with you. That's a fucking rom-com right there. Megan, get Raskin on the phone. <laughs> Isn't it possible to get Raskin on the phone? No? Yeah. I want to run it past him, man. I want to, and if it happens, I get a taste, Chris Cologne. I get a, a whiff, if you will. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. That's lulu.com. That's, com. I understand that. I just want to spell it out. <laughs> <laughs> Normally one says it, that spells it still. Lulu.com. What is that? Do you know what it is? I don't know. All right. The book could also be ordered on www.lulu.com. Search for Double Jackpot Christopher Cologne. A paperback version of the book is $15 and a PDF file is only 5 bucks. Five dollars yeah. is insanely inexpensive. Fifteen's not even that bad for a hard, for a paperback version. No. This is a million dollar idea right here. Like a, a fucking, a movie about a dude who fucking is stuck between two chicks, both of who play his birthday and win the lottery. Come on! Come I, like on. I can see that trailer. Chris Cologne is on to something. Nobody else can smell it but me. I'll read it. Thank you. I'm gonna make that smelly joke. I all. know, you're trying to get me to laugh again. It worked once. <laughs> Double Jackpot is a self-published book by Chris Cologne, man. It's the first book in his comic books, heavy metal, video games trilogy. Book two, Odd I See, A Tale from the Road, should be coming out soon. Get all the information. Chris Cologne, like a motherfucker, and his book, Double Jackpot. I'm serious. I'm going to recommend that to fucking Raskin. How is that not a movie? You know what I'm saying? This could be a sexy movie. You could do an R-rated version. There could be nudie in it. You could sell them fucking both chicks. Maybe a little penetration. Maybe a butthole shot. No butthole, no care. I would like to formally apologize to Christopher Cologne. Right no, now, sex but... sells. Chris Cologne will appreciate that. He's like, thanks for just throwing a few buttholes in there, man. Don't forget to check out two strangers one podcast.net, your one stop resource for everything show related. You can find links to subscribe to us on iTunes or on Stitcher. You could also find links to buy my book, Double Jackpot, on two strangers one podcast.net. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, you're cool, and fuck you, I'm out.